What's going on YouTube? How's everything going? My name is Shadowfist and welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. In today's video, we are doing something a little different, uh, something I haven't done for a very, very long time on the channel, and that is a first impressions video. And if you can't already tell what we're sort of looking at today or sort of, I guess, going over for a first impressions, that is Asadora by Naoki Urasawa. This is a very new series that has been coming out in this past couple years now. I think it's been in publication, I think since 2018 from when I looked. And this volume one here just recently came out this this month here in January 2021 here by Viz Media. Now, uh, before we get into the series, I'll show you guys pretty much the volume here. Obviously, I just picked it up myself and you guys will definitely see me show, showcase this volume again, probably in my manga haul video, which will be later in this month. So stay tuned for that if you want to see it again there. But other than that, it's a really cool volume. It is a Viz signature, as you guys can tell here. It does say SIG up there, which obviously means Viz signature. And I would say that it's not obviously quality, whereas as like, you know, let's say uh, Dark Horse with their hardcover prints of like Berserk or Blade of the Immortal. It's not like, uh, and then obviously it's not your traditional standard uh, Tankobon volume, for example. I mean, if I just pull out Rony Kench from the top here, obviously it's not uh, the same size. There's a comparison. So obviously it's not that. And I'm actually, it's kind of funny. I mean, I'm currently reading Kench in there. I'm not sure if you guys can see I'm missing volume three at the top there but other than that it's a cool volume it's sort of kind of like a little i guess a fake kind of i guess slip case i mean usually there's something that goes around it but as you guys can see here i guess you could put this on the first page but it's not a big deal so there's the front cover of course and this is done by naoki Rosawa, very famous mangaka in the manga industry obviously he's done works like monster 20th century boys billy bat and probably a few other series that i just can't really think off the top of my head but here's the front cover very cool very interesting very sort of almost childlike and i'll sort of get to that in a little later when i talk about the series moving on to the spine here we do have um obviously saying asadora the title of the series then you have volume one and now kurosawa there and you also have on the back here another once again asadora text with a little sun on the back which is really cool very simple nothing too complex and actually i think i also do like how the viz logo does sort of look on this spine in particular so that's the pretty much cover of the series now what i did love about this when i first got this in the mail um, was the beautiful beautiful chapter one color page and i don't really want to sort of i mean i guess i'll let you guys know now this is kind of like a little spoilerish kind of video but as you guys can tell beautiful beautiful color pages i'll open up a few color few pages here i think this is the second page and check that out very very nice um i mean don't get me wrong manga is obviously a black and white sort of median when it comes to viewing the ser a series in a, in a book format but if manga came like this once in a while i would not be disappointed this is really really cool and uh, i'll just show you i guess the last color page here um or possibly the second last but really cool and i love love the series and the way how now here is Sawa very portrays its characters and the very how s very simplistic his characters are there's not really too much going on with them i think they show enough expression enough emotion to sort of captivate what he is trying to portray from these characters and i guess to sort of talk about a little bit about the series now so as you guys can tell there is a girl on this front of the color very little girl um she has a huge family this is what we find out during reading the first volume here she has a very big family and not a lot of people tend to know her name they tend to sort of um mistake her name with one of her siblings or possibly somebody else out there and obviously the main character's name is asa um sort of basing off of this this uh, title of the story asa dora right so um really cool there so we get introduced to asa dora and actually i don't know if you guys saw there when i was showing the text but it did say i think it sort of actually takes place like in 2020 in tokyo 2020 and it actually does talk about the olympics and if you guys don't know the olympics were supposed to happen this year in japan uh sorry last year in japan sorry 2020 I'm sort of kind of in the 2020 mode still um but it was supposed to happen in 2020 but obviously it got pushed to this year and who knows if that's still even going to happen it probably still will but that's a different topic um, from this video and so like i said uh, we're introduced to As asa and then the story actually backtracks to i believe 1959 so obviously way before uh, 2020 was a thing and it's actually sort of kind of a post 
war kind of story um it actually obviously it happens after post uh world war ii there and then later in the series we're finding out so Asa sees her friend and you know I guess her mother is going into uh labor she's gonna you know, obviously give birth to another kid I think Asa does have like a family of like 12 siblings which is a crazy amount I couldn't even imagine that but obviously um she's a big family and then her mother it was going to go into birth but the big kicker is that there was this huge sort of hurricane tsunami typhoon going to hit the little small town in the prefecture that they live in and you know you can see all the families and you know trying to get inside and all the people trying to get inside and you know sort of barricade their doors and barricade their houses so nothing happens and what ends up happening is asa ends up catching this burglar named kasuga i believe his name is and so i guess he was he's an older gentleman and he's trying to obviously just uh get some food get some supplies for himself i'm not too sure if it's due to the storm i'm assuming it is but um i mean i can show you guys what he looks like here um, there is the character Kasuga right there very very older gentleman very mysterious and then what ends up happening was Asa chases him down due to Asa's sort of very good I guess running ability and sort of rats him out saying he's a burglar but no one's really hearing him because everyone's trying to get cover from the storm that's approaching the town and it's uh what ends up happening is he ends up taking Asa into this little warehouse and sort of kidnaps her a little bit and you sort of get the little backstory between Kasuga and why he's in the situation. He was a former sort of, I guess, pilot for the military, I would assume. And, you know, due to some sort of incident that happened in terms of, you know, them thinking he was stealing money there and he sort of gets framed for it. He gets into a fight and then obviously it causes him to lose his job. So he lost his piloting license and that's where he's at right now in his life. He's sort of trying to get in, he's sort of getting by and you can tell through his emotion. He's very sad and he's very, um, you know, unhappy with his life. And during the piloting, people used to call him a hero. And the reason why is just because the way he flew the planes and how good he was at flying planes. Um, you get that little backstory, I believe in chapter, I think three or four there. And then I think this first volume takes a crazy turn of events. So as you guys know, there's a storm that's coming in and what ends up happening is this storm literally starts tearing down the warehouse that they were in. And then they actually ended up leaving the warehouse, running into this sort of cargo sort of um, shelter. That's, you know, I think, you know, at boating docks, there's cargo um, boxes there that are, I think, metal or uh um, stainless steel or something like that and they end up taking shelter in there and then the storm actually finally hits them and they actually get blown away in their cargo and uh in the, in the cargo fleet that they're in and uh, they don't obviously don't know where they are and i don't know how much time has sort of passed uh between them being in the cargo and the, obviously the storm sort of passing over and then by the time they actually looked outside to see and make sure that everything was okay you get this beautiful beautiful crazy crazy scenery which i'll try to find here and show you guys because it's better shown on and honestly it's a full cover page it's a full quarter cover uh image here between both pages and just check this out this is what you see after i think chapter or beginning of chapter five this is honestly insane and if you guys have been following me along what i've been saying obviously everything has been wrecked the town that they were in or towns that were around them have been wrecked Due to this sort of storm that has sort of gone through and it's it was sad and pretty much you know we're trying we're sort of following asa here and to see what's going on obviously she's worried about her family kasuga doesn't really have a family as we find out that his his uh, wife and his son were killed in the war or killed during some sort of piloting or flying during the war time i would believe and you know it sort of as the series was progressing or as this volume was progressing it was sort of i guess you know kasuga knew uh, or asa was really determined to sort of help the people who were in need in the actual um, um survivors of the storm um, on top of their rooftops their houses and people still in the water and you know any survivors that pretty much survived the storm and so kasuga ended up finding this actually this, this uh, vehicle right here and actually taking it to um taking uh, asa to this rice ball shop where he used to i guess obviously buy rice balls from this one lady that worked there and asa really wanted to help all the people all the survivors there and sort of feed them because the boats were sort of destroyed through the storm so there was no way to get them get to them on land and uh what ends up uh, what ends up kasuga doing is dropping off asa there as telling her to get the rice balls made while he goes and gets a plane for 
them to drop off these rice balls through the air to the people which is really cool and you never think that it, that would actually work but it does work in this situation due to what he does with uh these balloons that he ends up picking up which is pretty sort of i guess contradicting or sort of ironic because he used to work at a shop which we find on the volume here a balloon shop selling balloons and um it's kind of funny there um and sort of i love how now kurosawa takes a play on that which is really genius in my opinion and uh, overall it's just towards the end of the volume i guess we're just sort of uh seeing what's next i mean obviously they're still delivering the rice balls and i i think that at the end of the volume here you do find that asa is we finally get to her sort of uh, town that she was living in and it's sort of wrecked but suddenly out of nowhere I'll, I don't know if you guys quickly saw the page there but out of nowhere we see these footprints and throughout the series or throughout sorry this volume there was Asa was hearing this noise to uh, as a storm was coming in of this monster or a creature or some sort of animal and Kasuga was sort of explaining that it was the wind and I know that obviously the wind makes noises but you know I guess it's possible that there was this monster in this storm and who knows what it is because I'm sort of getting 20th century boy vibes here because if you guys haven't read that series it's sort of has to do on a play of this one huge gigantic robot and um, I, I mean spoiler, spoilers to that series um, sorry if any of you guys are have not read that series definitely check it out if you haven't but uh, it's sort of really cool and I love how now Kurosawa is building up the tension here and just off the gate right from volume one not a lot of series can do that and i don't know if i would classify this as a seinen um uh, it's definitely a little thriller a little psychological um uh, yeah I, I don't know specifically where to ca um, classify this series maybe it's a little, little bit of a mystery here and there and but overall it's definitely a little slice of life and a little um heartwarming if that's a genre probably not but yeah overall it's been a really good first volume um that's pretty much what volume one entails and I'm, I'm very excited to pick up volume two and you know me being a fan of naoki Urasawa, probably at least my top three favorite manga of all time i had to pick it up it was a no-brainer and honestly i didn't even know the series was coming out so if you guys are fans of naoki Urasawa and i'm looking for a new read i believe there's only four volumes out in japan or that at least have been published in japan so I think volume two is coming out in April or May. So you're, if you guys are interested in a new series, especially from a very talented and very well-known mangaka, definitely check out Asadora. That's my recommendation on that. Um, obviously, this is just a first impressions video. And I mean, I usually tend to like to get the grasp of volumes through a couple different um, volumes, at least like one to one to three volumes is a good, I'd say a good way to sort of see where the series is going. But I was so intrigued and so excited to get into the series that I'm like, you know what, let me make a video for the guys, uh, for, for, for the guys, for the, for the, um, for the subscribers on the channel and uh, for everyone who wants to and wants to get into Asadora as a series. So I highly recommend this series if you guys are interested in something new, something very different from Naoki Urasawa that we really possibly haven't seen before. So without further ado, guys, that is my first impressions on the series. If you guys did enjoy this video, definitely drop a like. That'd be greatly appreciated. Comment if you want to see any other first impressions from me. I'm currently, like I said, finally getting a chance to read Rodin Kenshin that I picked up a while ago. And I'm on volume three here, so I definitely could do a first impressions of that of the first few volumes or at least the first bit of the series um from what i like and overall if i would have to give a rating of this volume one here i would say it's a solid eight and a half out of ten obviously it's not perfect but i think that as the story progresses that my rating could definitely get higher as a series in general so that's it guys like comment and subscribe share the video with all your friends and family and i will see everybody in the next video take care and have a great day